Hello everybody, I'm Jason and welcome to my kind book reviews. Um, this week, before we get into this week's books, I've got two books from last week that I picked up. So, first up in our reviews, we're going to review those two books. So, let's get to those without further ado. So, the first book up this week from last week that I picked up is Forever Evil, issue number 7. Um, I didn't get this last week. I didn't realise it was going to be a 4 99 book and I didn't have enough cash on me. It was the week before pay week, payday, so I didn't really want to use my card. Didn't have that much in the bank because it's the week before payday. So, I decided to leave it. Plus, I, I must admit, I was a bit peed off with DC because I didn't know it was going to be a 4 99 book. And I, I'd had to wait so long for this. I'd gone past the stage of like kind of really caring what happens in this story. So I decided to leave it. But then um, this week, for the first time ever, you know, payday and comic book day coincided, which was awesome. Um, it's a shame this doesn't happen every month because it was just awesome. It allowed me to be able to have the cash on new comic book day to go and buy not just new comic books, but books that I wanted to catch up on. So that was really cool, and so I did pick this up then, yeah, I relegged, I had my bit of a moan last week, and I'm over it now, and I picked this up, and I'm really glad I softened on this, because it was a really good conclusion to the Forever Evil story. Um, for me, with events, I always judge them as if it's got a good story that's got a beginning and an end. There can be bits dangling at the end that, like, lead you onto other stuff, but like it should you should still feel you get a full story and I felt with this conclusion I felt that I had with Forever Evil I had a full story so um, the art in here I was also impressed with um, David Finch you know traditionally what I've seen of Finch's art he does like these really souped up kind of superheroes on steroids but he's really been, throughout this series, has really been restrained with the way he's drawn. And it's really worked really well. Um, I really enjoyed his art in this book. And I don't think I've enjoyed David Finch's art as this much in, in quite a while. Um, there's some great twists as the story goes on. Um, we get some characters left over. Not everybody gets kind of killed off, which is good. So there's like things you can pick up in later stories. So I liked that. Um, the end we get two kind of cliffhangers the story's kind of finished but two things that kind of got to direct where the books are going to go from now on uh, and both of them I was super excited for um, yeah this was just I felt a really satisfactory conclusion um, I you know by the end of this I, I was really happy and I'm glad I, read, I I suffered and picked it up and I'd give forever evil issue number seven five stars out of five So next, uh, the last of the two books uh, from last week I picked up, it is Justice League, issue number 30. Um, I do really like that cover. Um, and I really like the direction of this book. It works well both as kind of an epilogue to Forever Evil, and it also works well as kind of like a beginning to where Justice League is going to go next. And we start the story... With our new team of new Justice League that we see on the cover there. You can see you've got Captain Cold or over this side. You've got Captain Cold, Batman, Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor, Shazam, Aquaman and, and Cyborg. They're our new Justice League. And we start the story with them taking on the Secret Society or what's left of the Secret Society. We then jump back four days to kind of show how this has come about. Um, I really love the issue. You kind of all the way through it. I'm kind of on Superman's side because I'm trying to figure out what it is Lex Luthor's after, what is he up to. So I'm really interested and intrigued with this new direction. Uh, the end of the book is a fantastic hook for the next issue. I loved it. And for all Batman fans, maybe not so much this issue, but the next issue, you may want to check out because there's going to be a big confrontation and uh, something big is happening at the end of this, uh, coming out of Forever Evil. And I'm really excited to see where that's going to go. Uh, that looks awesome. Um, but yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed this book. Slight gripe would be Wonder Woman. Um, in her own book, she's totally badass. She's the god of war, after all. But you you get that feminine side as well. So she's like a multifaceted character. In this, she's just pure badass. And she's always in a bad mood with a bad temper. 
and like it, it, it feels a very different character to the character we read in her own book um i i just found that uh, that that was just something that really struck me reading this um on that other thing though i did like the interactions between the team in here um and yeah i'm i'm just really enjoying this book and this is a book i'm like going into like trinity war i was reading all the justice league books Currently, I'm reading none of them, but I may add this one back to, to my list because I'm really interested in where we're going next. I'd give Justice League issue number 30, five stars out of five. So, the first of the books I got for this week, it is Star Wars. Well, the Star Wars, sorry. Issue number eight. Uh, this is the final issue. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is based off of the original first draft of the screenplay for Star Wars by George Lucas. So, um, and so this has been kind of like what could have been, and this is the final installment. Um, I really enjoyed this, and I've really enjoyed it all the way through. And I must kind of like say, when I say enjoyed it, it, has, it isn't that it's been a great story. You can see, see that the script had problems and that Lucas did the right thing to fix a lot of the problems that there were here. But I've just really enjoyed it. It's been fascinating to see what could have been and to see how many of these ideas that he kind of pushed to one side and brought into the other movies. Uh, because he did cram a lot into this and he slowed the story down, gave us a lot more time to get to know our characters and not as much jumping around. Um, and I think the changes he made were for the better, definitely. Um, but it's really interesting to see where the, where his idea started from, and to see just to see the whole process of like what they used and what they didn't. Um, as for this issue, as it, once again, the art was awesome. Uh, Mike Mayu, I think it is on art. Let me just check. I want to make sure I get the dude's name right. Yeah, Mike Mayu on art. His artwork is just awesome, and I don't know, like I, I think the colorist uh, Rain. B B Ray do deserves credit in as well because the art throughout this book has just been terrific. Um, I really have enjoyed the um, the art. Um, you know, all the way through this, it's. It's been really, really cool. Um, yeah, they've, they've done just such a top job job. So a big thumbs up to Mike Mayhew because he's done a great job. As for this issue, um, it wraps the story up nicely. We This issue, we're only concentrating on two things. We're not jumping around as much, so that's good. We've got to spend the most time we've got to spend with Anakin Starkiller, our main character, um, by himself and get to know a bit more about him the most and it's funny that it's the conclusion where we get to actually spend some time with the guy and the guy starts growing on you um there, there's a couple of twists in here that don't comp make complete sense uh from where we were at lack of issues i feel like i've missed something here uh, changes were too abrupt and there was nothing kind of building up to that um I, and at the end it does kind of feel like there's a bit of a rush to get everything sorted out um, but there's a familiar element to the end that you can see that they kept in um, but all in all, I, I, I thought this was a good conclusion. I have really enjoyed seeing what could have been. And I think for any Star Wars fan, um, that, uh, that this is a must read. Because it's just so fascinating to see what could have been. And I give the Star Wars issue number 8, 4 stars out of 5. So, next up in my reviews, we have Wolverine issue number 7. And... Uh, I've been enjoying this run more than I've enjoyed um, Cornell's previous run. I feel the thing with Paul Cornell, I think there's a lot of good ideas, but I don't know, there's something lacking. And this issue, basically what we're dealing with at the moment, it's a character study of Wolverine. As now that he's been stripped of his healing factor, he's trying to find his place. So he's be become a secret agent, and he's made everybody believe that he's become a villain, so that he can infiltrate this organisation right because he's trying to be useful he's trying to find his way in the world to find a way to be a hero and you kind of get to see how much he relied on his healing factor not just to like be a hero but to, you know everything about him was just this healing factor and kind of without it he's kind of pathetic because there's a lot of other heroes that don't have healing factors you know but they some that don't even have powers but they managed to, to do their job and to do their thing without getting killed. 
Yeah, Wolverine seems really vulnerable, you know, and it keeps being reiterated how vulnerable he is now because he's relied on his, his healing factor. And I'm not kind of sure if I really like this this version of Wolverine. Like I think, yeah, you, know, you look at books like The Flash, and all the time in The Flash, of both creative teams that we've had in the New Fifty Two. I've repeatedly illustrated it's not the powers that make him the hero, it's the person that makes him the hero. It's the person who's got those powers because even when he's not when he's doing his job, he'll be using his detective skills and he'll use that sometimes as the flash as well to kind of figure things out. So it's not always about the powers. And with Wolverine you kind of feel that without the powers he's he's just not he's he's not really that nice of a person. There's nothing to him, he's quite soft. And this isn't the Wolverine I remember. Like, the, as a kid, the character I fell in love with was the char this character that didn't want to get too close to people because he had this feral side, this wild side, and he didn't want people getting hurt. So he'd keep his distance, he'd be a bit of a loner because he didn't quite know how to control this feral side. Um, but he was, like, totally badass, and he had no compunction of killing if he had to kill. Um, and that Wolverine seems to totally have changed. The current version we've got is a guy that doesn't like to kill. Um, and now he's not got no healing factor. He can't do what he used to do. Um, and like he used to say, I'm the best at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice. But now we're seeing that that was all bluff. That without this healing factor, he's not the best at what he does. Because he's continuously getting his ass kicked. And um, I'm really a bit disappointed with the character at the moment. And I think probably one of the problems is, is this version of the character. I know to keep things fresh, you need to go in different directions. But this version of the character, I just can't understand how anybody could really root or cheer for him in this book. Uh, the character I'm most drawn to in the book is Pitch. I, I really find her story intriguing. That she's leading this criminal's life to, for the sake of her daughter. Um, and her daughter's the main thing in her mind. And can, she's the one who figures out that Wolverine isn't telling the truth and that Wolverine's lying and she's kind of in this relationship with Wolverine and he's this like oh you know we could still have a relationship I've lied to you I've totally deceived you I've looked to put you in prison but I thought we could still have a relationship after all this and he kind of thinking well Wolverine you've been a bit delusional there you lied to someone it's very doubtful you're going to have a relationship with them um, so yeah, I'm not really, while I'm enjoying the book and I'm enjoying the story it's telling, I'm not really enjoying this version of Wolverine, and at the moment I'm just, I'm kind of in two minds whether to keep getting it or not. Um, but as for the issue itself, um, I enjoyed it, I thought there was some nice twists and turns, I really like the character pitch, but it looks like her story could be ending in a kind of tragic direction, which I'm a bit sad about, but we'll see where it goes, but... Um, I think this book at the moment, I'm more, I'm more enjoying the supporting cast than the main character. Um, but I'd give this issue of Wolverine, I'd give it 3 stars out of 5. So next up we have The X-Files Season 10, issue number 12 from IDW. Um, this book, was, it's been really good because they've really captured the, the feel of the series. And in this book issue we continue that. Uh, we continue, it has that feel. Um, some of the plot lines in this one, it does kind of feel like it's a bit of a rerun like we've seen this before in episodes of the X-Files. So some of it was like treading old ground. Uh, but they continue to build the mystery really well and I'm really intrigued to see that hopefully we're going to get some kind of conclusion and, and know what where this is all coming from. Um, a couple of things in here I, I didn't quite get. But I don't know if that part of that is because I can't quite remember where we ended up with certain characters in the TV show. Um, but I'm really intrigued to see where it's going. The building on the mystery is really nice. And one thing that this really has going for it, it definitely has the feel of the show. Um, and overall, yeah, I'm enjoying this. And I'd give X-Men, sorry, X-Files, sorry, um, season 10, issue number 12, I would give it 4 stars out of 5. So, next we're back on Marvel with Winter Soldier, The Bitter March, issue number four. This is the piano number issue of this little mini-series. Um, and it's been a really great series. I've really enjoyed this and glad that I, I picked this up. Because I, I usually, I do try and stay away from mini-series. Lately, I've kind of been going back and picking some up. But I try to kind of keep my monthly money. 
uh, for my weekly week books that are going to come out every week uh, rather than pick up mini series. But like I say, I have kind of regressed in there. Uh, one thing about this book that I love is the villain, the Drain. He is such an awesome villain. He basically takes all your all your fears and your doubts and uses them against you. His powers kind of can like he can know all your fears and your doubts and uses them against you to get you to commit suicide or to do what he wants and stuff. So that's been like a really cool villain and something you'd expect out of the twisted mind of Rick Remender. But it's twisted in a good way. Um, so yeah, I really love this villain. And um, I don't know where we're going to end up with him. But it'd be great to see him again sometime. Because I, I do think he's a great villain. Um, the story just continues to be a lot of fun. It's set in the 60s. It's spies, espionage. Um, well, you know, we've moved on from the train now. Uh, where we had a couple of issues. Which was really cool. Um, and now, like, they're still on the run, but, like, you up against this villain, the drain, how is Ran Xian gonna get, um, uh, he, he's, he's he, you know, gonna get away from this guy or defeat this guy? Um, and one of the brilliant side effects is because he can do all these things, Winter Soldier's got all his memories back. He knows who he is now. So, like, whose side is Winter Soldier going to be on? So, there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here. I'm really enjoying the heck out of this. Um, not so much of the espionage, this issue, but it's still a really great issue. And it's really great that we can see the beginnings in this in this book of Ran Xian becoming the Iron Nail. Um, and I thought that was really cool. And, yeah, I'm just absolutely loving this book. And I would give Winter Soldier, issue number four, five stars. So next up we have uh, The Brass Sun, uh, it is from the people behind 2000 AD, uh, it's issue 1 of a 6 part mini series. Um, really um, beautiful and imaginative start to a series this was. Um, it sets the main character up really well and the story really well and it's just a beautiful book. It feels thicker, I haven't done a page count but it does feel thicker. Um, And certainly reading it, for me, I did get like a kind of Lord of the Rings feel, but with more of a sci-fi kind of edge to it, rather than like the swords and fantasy. Uh, the art in here is really beautiful. Um, it revolves around this, um, basically this solar system, where they have this sun, and it's a kind of like a, this clockwork system. And, you know, basically, it's slowing down. It needs maintenance, basically. And the sun is cooling down and everything's slowing down. A couple of planets have already turned to ice and they need to get it going again. But the people on this one planet, they worship the Karg. And anybody who says anything about that it needs repairs or anything is blasphemous and they burn them. So in this world where they were burning people, uh, this guy has figured out what's going on. He gives the information to his granddaughter and helps her get away. One, he knows himself he's going to get captured and killed, but he, it's the only way he can guarantee her safety. And he knows in his granddaughter's hands it will be safe and she'll be able to save everyone. Um, and that's the basic gist of the story. Um, I really loved this issue. Uh, the art is great. I love the art. Um, he really does a great job with facial expressions um, and we, we have these occasional pages where great double page spread and uh, yeah it, it, it's a it was a really good start to a series you get really invested in our main character and you know definitely I'm really interested to see where this is going to go um, it wasn't a book I was initially going to pick up, but I'm glad I tried it out. I definitely will be looking for, for the next issue, and I give Frasson issue number one, five stars out of five. So, next up we have Batman Eternal, issue number eight. This is the weekly series from DC Comics. Um, and this was a return to form for the series. I hadn't really been pleased with the last couple of issues. Um, I felt like it had been very abrupt the way that it had been moving on to different things. But this issue, um, I felt was a really great return to form. 
um, we get invested in the stories. Uh, the, the big thing that come across with this issue is that Commissioner Forbes is a bit of a dick. And I can't wait to see him get, get his. Um, but you know you've got the, the Gotham Police Department now under the control of Forbes uh, who works for Falcone, the big mafia boss. He's now like really pushing them to kind of take on Batman. And Batman even tries to kind of make peace with Forbes. But Forbes is having none of it because he's a dick. Um, you know, we've got, you know... We see a bit of Stephanie Brown, who I'm really liking. I don't know her past character, and I have no kind of... I've never read her before. But what they've kind of written in this so far, I really liked her character. Uh, the art by Gillen March is great, um, and I really enjoyed that. And, yeah, all in all, this, this was just a really good issue, and uh, got me excited for the series again. So I'm hoping we can keep this up for a while now. Um, because it looks like we're going to get back into these other stories, which is going to be cool. Um, and yeah, really enjoying this. I um, hope it keeps it up. And I'd give Batman Eternal issue number 8, 5 stars out of 5. So, sticking with DC, next up we have Aquaman issue number 31. Uh, this is the Swamp Thing crossover, um, and this was another really good issue. One of the things about this book is it's just really, really consistent. Every issue just really delivers. There's never like kind of like you have a bad one, then a good one. It's just kind of constantly really fun. Um, one of the things I did find interesting about the crossover is like you've got like Swamp Thing and Aquaman are both books that in the beginning of the New 52 you had writers, you had Jeff Johns on Aquaman, big name writer, you had Scott Snyder on Swamp Thing, a big name writer, maybe not as big as Jeff Johns, but it was still a big name writer, and both the, the early issues were pretty acclaimed, uh, coming out of those early books in the New 52, they were two of the books that got a lot of the praise, and then, um, you know, they left the books, and Jeff Parker on Aquaman, um, yep, yeah, Jeff Parker on Aquaman, and Charles Soule on Swamp Thing took over, and not only did they take over, but in many ways, what they're writing is superior that, than what came before. And they've done really great jobs with the book. Except the book doesn't kind of get the same talk, aren't as critically acclaimed, don't get the same kind of amount of people talking about them, yet they're probably better. And it's kind of ironic how that works. Um, and I kind of found the fact that these two books have got that in common, common um, and now they've been kind of connected in this crossover, I find that kind of funny. Um, but anyway, this getting into this issue, I really enjoyed it. I did have a bit of a problem with Aquaman, not really, kind of, if you go straight into attacking Swamp Thing, um, and it's like, not like trying to understand well, why are you doing this, you know, is there something we can do, like, because it's clear Swamp Thing doesn't have a clue what he's talking about, and once he learns what he says, he goes to deal with it. So, I, I think Swamp, I think Aquaman's whole approach in this is kind of, I don't think the right approach and it doesn't feel like the character we usually get uh, you know you look at how he deals with like the situation between Atlantis and the surface world and how he tries to be this kind of peace between the two yet in this situation he goes in gung-ho um, yeah I, I didn't quite get that um, but other than that I thought this was a really good issue we get to see Mira kind of investigating who's trying to kill her and that was really cool, finding out about this new, different part of Atlantis. Um, you know, and then we've got Triton Base as well, Trident Base. That looks really interesting, what's going on there. Um, so, all in all, yeah, it was, like I say, it was a really good issue. We get two artists this issue, um, which I think the way they use them, it works. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this book, really glad I started picking it up again. And I'd give Aquaman issue number 31, four stars out of five. So, still sticking with DC, we have the New 52, Future's End, issue number 4. I really love that Frankenstein cover. Um, I think that is really cool. Um, this issue, this just continues to be a really good series. I'm really enjoying it. It's got like a bunch of lesser known characters, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, I think the, the overall success of this book is how many of these characters are still going to be around after it. Um, I think that's going to be the big sticking point. It was so cool seeing Frankenstein and Shade once again. Uh, cause that was one of my favourite books coming out of the beginnings of the New 52, Frankenstein, The Agents of Shade. Um, so I'm really glad to see them again in this book. 
Um, I'm also really enjoying the way that they're doing the stories. We we fo we have all these stories we're following, and every week they'll add new ones in, but they'll keep a couple of familiar stories in there. Um, so we get a bit new, but we get a bit of continuing stories. That's really cool. I'm really getting invested in the different characters. In Grifter seems a character I've never read before, but I'm seeing quite interesting. Um, I really like Frankenstein, and I liked how they tied his story in with something that happened in issue one. So things are beginning to connect up. We're introduced to these three new villains, which I, I I'm interested to see where that's going to go, and also to see Lois's investigation. That's really interesting, and where that leads, and the character we've kind of uncovered there. So all in all, yeah, this just continues to be a really fun book, uh, really building up nicely. And I'd give issue number four, our future's end, uh, four stars out of five. So this week, our number one from Image is Trees, um, written by Warren Ellis with art by Jason um, Howard. An artist I've not heard of before. He not only draws the book, but he does the inks and the colours as well. Um, which, you know, you don't see that often. You know, yeah, you see sometimes artists will colour it, but not the inks as well. So he's really a complete artist on the book, and it definitely gives the book a different kind of feel. Uh, the whole idea of this, I really like. Um, the first thing that I love and um, is the whole thing of, like, we discovered intelligent life, but it didn't recognise us as intelligent, which I just love, because as a race, we are very arrogant, you know. Many of our religions have us made in the image of the Creator. How more arrogant than that can you get? Um, and we often think we're the centre of the universe, where we're just like this one little planet in this vast universe. And I really like the idea that some kind of life form out there discovers us, and they don't think of us intelligent. Um, I love that. Um, but basically what it is, is 10 years ago, these big kind of like trees or, or poles kind of landed in all our different cities and have kind of just been there. And nothing we do can remove them or destroy them. And occasionally that will leak out stuff that will kill the local population. And that's where our story starts off in Brazil with this happening. Uh, we are then kind of introduced in this world to three different groups of people. Uh, the first people there in New York and this guy he's running for mayor and we learn a bit about him and a bit about New York in this time. We then this other guy which I think it's China he's in and he's he's living in the country and he's moving to this little city that's kind of all boarded in and I don't know if there's a tree in the city but it's certainly this very peculiar city that he's kind of gone which is a bit of an eye opener for him being a country boy. And then the final bit of story um, is basically, I'm not sure what country it's in, but it's somewhere where there's a lot of snow. And these scientists are basically living out there doing work. Um, I liked the, the different characters and I found it very intriguing, the whole idea of this kind of silent kind of invasion um, where they just kind of wait you out. Um, so yeah, I felt the story in that respect was good. I did find the end of the book a bit abrupt. It kind of just ends. There isn't like any kind of cliffhanger. I don't know if the plant, the way they have like it ends, if that's supposed to be the cliffhanger of what that plant is. But it does feel a bit abrupt the way it ends. But maybe he'll be re read better when it's collected as a trade. Um, but all in all, I, this intrigued me enough to want to pick up the next issue. I, I really like this. The art, I, definitely the way that it's done, definitely gives it all a very unique kind of feel. Um, Certainly, yeah. Um, I'm definitely intrigued uh, enough to get the next issue, and I'd give Trees issue number one four stars out of five. Our penultimate book this week to be reviewed is another DC book. It is The Flash, issue number 31, and this continues the fantastic start to this, that of the new creative team, uh, Robert Venditti and Van Jensen. They've just done a fantastic job on this book. Um, you know, I really enjoyed uh, Manipul and Bucciolato, their run on the book, and it was really great. But these guys have just come in and continued the, the story. The character feels consistent with what came before, yet they're telling their own story, and they've just set it off, and it's really cool. I'm really enjoying it. 
Um, I love the the mixture of the CSI stuff with the superhero stuff. I think that's re really cool and gives the book definitely a very unique kind of feel. And it's something that I hope they keep in the TV show because I think that kind of CIS element to it is something that could make the TV show kind of really interesting. Um, I also really like that they're continuing the theme of like, you know, it's not the powers that make Barry Allen the Flash the hero. It's the person. It's the person behind those powers that makes them a hero, you know. And it's like whether he was the Flash or not, he would still be going out there solving these murders doing these mysteries going above and behind to get to, to the bottom of things um because he's a basically a hero and there's some people that are like that 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 you know it doesn't matter if they've got powers or not um and i really like that we're continuing that in it um i'm loving brett booth's artwork um slight gripe be um that barry looks like his suit his clothes are a bit too small for him they seem a bit tight but then again, if I burnt calories as quickly as the Flash, I'd probably wear really tight clothing as well. Um, so yeah, let's look at my notes here. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. I'm really intrigued by the story. I'm loving the future stuff as well with the future Flash. And I'm really intrigued to see how that joins up and what's going on there. Um, and that's very intriguing. Uh, Wally West seems like a moody teenager at the moment, which I'm thinking that's how he's supposed to come across. So they're doing a great job there. Um, and all in all, yeah, I'm just really enjoying this book. Uh, I, I just I think it continues to be a lot of fun. And I give issue number 31 of The Flash, I give it four stars out of five. So my final pick book of the week is Uncanny Avengers issue number 20, which just also happens to be my pick of the week. I just bloody love this book. It was really, really good. Um, it, one of the funny things about this book is like last weekend, I saw the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. I also, using the Marvel Unlimited app, I also like read the original um, story, which I was really amazed by that original story. It's only two issues long. I, I didn't realize. I'd always heard of Days of Future Past, and I just thought it was a longer story, kind of like the Phoenix Saga, but it's not. It's just two issues long. But anyways, having read that original Days of Future Past, it really struck me how similar the days of future past is to what Rick Remender doing in this book. Um, the Remender has a slightly different approach in that rather than why in days of future past we just get the future, the 2013 as it is in the book, um, and we get this glimpse of the future of this world where you've got these sentinels running around. In this it shows you how the world goes to hell. It's basically, and it's not like so much the sentinels, it's earth getting destroyed and then this mutant planet being set up. Um, so we've got to see how that happens rather than just being stuck into it. Uh, but it's the same gist of them going back in time to people by in their, their younger selves to kind of put things right. And so the, 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 the skeleton of the story is the same, but the body that he's put on the skeleton, Rick Mendes kind of changed things around, added stuff in. Uh, but it, it, did, it did kind of amaze me how similar the two stories are. Um, and I didn't really realise that until this week. Um, as for the book itself, it's just fantastic. I'm just loving it. Um, Acuna's art is just brilliant. He, he. Let me check, but he he doesn't just he does the art. He's another one does the ink and the colours as well, and it just really works in setting up his own kind of. Um, his art. But he, he also does great. There's, some re there's a great moment there between the, the brothers, Havoc and Cyclops, which I just really love. Uh, that was just a really beautiful moment as well. Um, and yeah, it's just... And then you've got this future team that Kang has kind of put together to kind of come and help out the ex help, help out the Avengers. It's just all of it, just really, really good. Um, story moves along nicely, it makes sense, and everything, it just builds lovely. I'm just really loving this. Uh, it's been a really good run by Remender, uh, who's really great at planning out these, these books and this long-term story he's gonna tell, but then each issue feels like you get a full chunk of that story. Um, so yeah, really, really great. I'm really loving this book, and I give Uncanny Avengers issue number 20. Well, it's my pick of the week, so it's five stars out of five. So, those are my reviews for another week, done and dusted.
um, I the plan at the moment is I should be back on Wednesday with a haul video um, and then at some point over next weekend with um, a review video my review video may be a bit later next week it's just I've got a crazy weekend with work so I don't know whereabouts I'm gonna fit in the actual filming um, and uploading of the video so it may not even get done till the Monday but we will see um, hopefully I'm hoping for Sunday um, but don't be surprised if you don't see my review video next week up until Monday um, as always thank you very much for watching and um, please if you like the video give me those thumbs up let me know you've liked what I've done if you disagree or agree with anything I've said in the video uh, please comment below I I'd love to hear what you think of the things I've said or the books I've read um, once again a big thank you uh, for watching I greatly appreciate that a really cool thing happened this week I am now on 201 subscribers which is just awesome and I want to thank every single one of you um, because without you there wouldn't be 201 subscribers and I know this is probably something everybody says but when I started this I did this for fun and, and I still do it for fun because I enjoy it um, and it's just totally awesome that I've got 201 subscribers so that is really cool and a just big thank you to everybody uh, who has subscribed to my channel um, so yeah that's me yammered and I'm through enough uh, there I hopefully will see you all next week hope you all have a good week um, I've been Jason this, these have been my kind book reviews bye for now